Module 4, Embed Power BI Content. Hello, I'm Peter Myers, the course developer. And I'm Noam Ravet, I'm a product manager from the Power BI Embedded team. In this video, we will describe the development methodology for embedding Power BI content. We will cover registering an Azure AD app, importing NuGet packages, adding app settings, and then the mechanics of embedding Power BI content. Here we are at stage three of the development methodology, registering an Azure AD app. An Azure AD app is required to establish an identity for your app and to specify permissions to Power BI REST resources. It's required when requesting an access token. There are two registration tools that you can use to register an Azure AD application. There's the Azure portal and there's the embed setup tool. And lastly, permissions can also be granted programmatically in your code. Okay, let's now describe each of those registration tools. Use the Azure portal to register an app. The advantages is it exposes all supported permissions. It allows granting permissions. It allows reviewing, modifying, deleting an app, and it allows setting a service principle. However, there's one disadvantage. It requires accessing the Azure portal, which can be time consuming and complex. You will need to grant permissions for the master user to avoid being prompted for consent by Azure AD. A global admin can grant permissions to all users within the organization for this application. However, the master user, which is not a global admin, can grant permissions only to the master account for this application. Note that granting permissions is not required when using a service principle embedding identity. You can also use the embed setup tool to accelerate embedding. It provides you two paths. There's embed for your customers and embed for your organization. The embed setup tool lets you register an Azure AD app which allows delegation of common permissions. It also allows you to create a workspace, import a Power BI desktop file, you can either select a sample or use your own file, and also grant permissions for the Azure AD app. It provides you resources, including the configuration values for your app, workspace, and report, and also a downloadable sample solution with your configuration values already inserted into its config file. You can open the sample app in Visual Studio, insert your password into the file, and simply run it to achieve your first embed. Use the Embed Setup tool to accelerate embedding for your organization. It's targeted at enterprises that want to embed analytic content on behalf of their internal users. The workflow involves signing into Power BI, registering your app, creating a workspace, and importing content. Use the Embed Setup tool to accelerate embedding for your customers, which this time is targeted at those that want to embed analytic content. And the workflow involves signing into Power BI, registering your app, creating a workspace, importing content, and granting permissions. Note this tool does not support using service principle embedding identity. Now we've arrived at stage four of the development methodology, importing NuGet packages. Once you've created a web project, you can import the following packages. There's the Microsoft Identity Web Package and also the Microsoft Power BI API Package. The Power BI JS script can be imported using NPM or CDN. Let's now introduce those packages to you. The Microsoft Identity Web Package enables ASP.NET Core Web Apps and Web APIs to use the Microsoft Identity Platform. And the Microsoft Power BI API package is a .NET client library for Microsoft Power BI public REST endpoints and provides access to Power BI workspaces and content identifiers for datasets, reports, dashboards, tiles. And here we are at stage five of the development methodology, adding app settings. We need to now add our app settings to the app settings JSON. For Azure AD, you will need to add your domain, tenant ID, client application ID, and client secret. For Power BI, you will need to add the service root URL and optionally the workspace IDs. Here's what an app settings file might look like. It includes values for all the settings we just mentioned. And now here we are at stage six of the development methodology, embedding Power BI content. The embedding web page must include at minimum two things. There's a script element to source the client side library and also the dev element in which you'll be embedding. 
server side, the web app should generate an access token and generate an embed token that would then represent a list of dataset IDs and report IDs, access level, optionally effective identities if there's row level security, and optionally a target workspace if you're saving reports. Note that that access level only applies to Power BI reports, not paginated reports. Then retrieve the resource IDs, be it your report ID, dashboard ID, or tile ID, and then retrieve the embed URLs. On the client side, you will need to output embed artifacts inside a script element. Then, the configuration object will be used to describe what and how to embed. In this example, you can see that we're embedding a report. The artifact type could also be a visual, a dashboard, a tile, or Q&A. The ID will be the unique ID of your embedded content. And the token type can either be embed or AAD when embedding for your organization. And lastly, you can set resource-specific settings. In this example, you can see that we are hiding the filters and page navigation panes. Let's now discuss report-specific settings. There's type, which must be report. There are optional settings that allow you to hide certain panes or to control language and many others. There's the optional page name to focus on a page in the report. There are optional permissions if required, uh, especially when creating or modifying reports. And lastly, there's the view mode. Is it view or does it support edit? Do note that embed tokens must have acquired relevant privileges for that edit to work. There are also specific settings when embedding report visuals. In this case, the type will be set to visual, and you must also provide a page name and a visual name. There are optional settings which you can set, such as language settings and locale settings, and many others. Optionally, you can also set the height and width of your element. However, if not provided, the div size will be used. There are also dashboard and dashboard tile specific settings. For dashboards, the type is set to dashboard and there's the optional page view. Will it use actual size, fit to width or one column? For dashboard tiles, you will set the type to tile. There are also Q&A specific settings. Here the type will need to be set as Q&A and you will need to select your view mode, either interactive or result only. Result-only mode uses a pre-populated questions, while interactive mode allows your users to input their own questions. And providing a question is optional if using interactive mode, however mandatory if using result-only mode. A final step is to invoke the Power BI Embed method, and that's done by passing in the div element and the configuration option. Let's now describe some optimization steps you might want to take. In order to improve the end user experience and provide more flexibility for developers, the API calls can add phases to the embedding process. There are two functions to consider when using phased embedding. There's the load function, which retrieves information on the embedded object and dynamically changes any settings or the containing div element in the background before the object appears. And then there's the render function, which makes the object visible. So let's say you would like to embed content, but first you would like to perform actions such as selecting a specific visual or page. In this case, you would first call the load function. Once this function is called, you can add any additional code for performing your filtering or any other desired actions. Lastly, you will use the render function to display your content. Consider using Bootstrap to prepare and initialize the iframe while waiting for the server side calls to return the resources and tokens. When using Bootstrap, report ID, embed URL, and access token are not required. Keep in mind that this is not supported for paginated reports. Let's lastly consider report layout customizations. A custom layout allows you to set a personalized layout for the report visuals at runtime or on load. Display options can be fit to page, fit to width, and actual size. A report with a default layout will render in the given div size. To avoid scroll bars, adjust the div size to the size of the report. And to seamlessly integrate a report in your application, consider removing the iframe border, setting the report background to transparent in order to reveal the web application background. Note custom layouts can also be achieved by using report bookmarks. 
In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to embed Power BI reports.